Well, first, first, James, how are you? Very well, thank you. Very well. Yeah, cannot complain. That's so. very good to hear. Um, well, before we jump into the album, I'd, I'd like to do a little bit of background. Um, do you remember what the first album or song was that kind of completely got you hooked on music? Oh, shit, dude. Um, I think that's a question where it's like, because I think the stuff that got me hooked on music when I'm, before I was a musician, mm. you know, when I was like very young as a child and stuff, was like the likes of Queen or Duran Duran or like stuff that my, my parents were into. And then, you know, as I was became a teenager, um, you know, going through puberty, getting into music, actually performing and whatnot, like you start like, it's a whole different set of songs and music. Sure. Then it was more like The Prodigy, and Slipknot's uh, first album. Um, I think those were two two bands that really stand out that I listened to and a few older friends of mine played for me. Uh, they were actually ended up being in one of my first local bands. And okay. um, you know, that was like, holy shit, I wanna I wanna do music. Music's music's the, the way I wanna go in life, you know. <laughs> right. Well, Especially with a band like Prodigy, what attracted you to to their music and Slipknot, I suppose, as well? It, it's 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 not similar type of music, but it has a certain attitude, I would say. Um, I'd yeah, I'd say it's um, it, yes, they're different, but they're also very similar and they're very rhythmical. They they're quite tribal and primal at times, um, and uh, they, they invoke a a feeling you know and it's some some might think it chaos or um you know just all over the shop but i think it's uh you know um like pent-up feelings or emotions and you can like listen to it and let them go you know that's what i'm saying right so that was a, oh, good i no, i just think that you know that's definitely a, a especially you know when i was an early teenager like a lot of my music was like that it was like a uh, a release which I think a lot of you know that's that's just a general thing for a lot of you know kids at that age mm. and as you started to perform yourself then and, and being on stage was that a similar uh, type of feeling then as a release yeah I think you know well the first few performances and stuff like that was just you know very much like nerves and <laughs> don't fuck up and you know what I mean the usual shit but yeah for me it's it was almost like a, a therapy you know um You'd, you'd, you'd go up there for you know you a lot of time and that was your that was your time that was you know, that was you sitting in the chair or laying down on the fucking table and like instead of one therapist there's a few thousand and that's the thing you know it's like hell yeah is it because you hear it a lot from musician but I'm not a I'm not a musician myself so I don't know but is it very addicting that that rush that you get on stage Absolutely, absolutely, um, and it's one that, uh, for me, it's you know like a lot of rushes or a lot of things that you get addicted to. It, you're always chasing it, but I feel like for me, it, it's it's something yes you chase, but it's obtainable every time you go on stage. It's like in your mind, you know. Like for me, it's like I could be playing a, a festival, like we just played the other day at Blue Ridge Rock Fest in Virginia, and there's you know. 20, 30,000 people watching it and it's fucking insane. But I can get the same feeling of like, you know, we're on a, a club show and there's like 1,800, 2,000 people, like, you know, much smaller show, but it it still has that same effect mm -hmm. and it is addictive. But, you know, I think that if it, if you didn't get on stage and really enjoy it that much, then you aren't really putting as much effort in as you should, you know, or you're right. not really, I don't think you're really getting out of it what you should be. You know what I mean? Like, it yeah, shouldn't feel like a chore. It should feel like a something you're very much excited for. Well, that's a very interesting point then, because as a musician and, and going from kind of, as you mentioned, playing in, in uh, as a young kid in bars, uh, I suppose, to to playing for mm -hmm. thousands of people and, and everything in between. Were there times where, where your passion was challenged? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, I think, you know, there's, we, especially in the early years of asking, we, um, we almost heard ourselves to death. Um, you know, 
we did one year where I think we played like no joke, it was almost 300 shows okay. in a year, and it was just fucking nuts. And it was taking a not just a physical, but like a mental toll on the band, you know, because we were young and we, um, we indulged and we were, you know, quite reckless. And uh, yeah, so I think those times it is challenging. And that is, you know, maybe we have bitten off more than we can chew and maybe we do need to take a step back um, from, from this, you know. But then, you know, we, uh, we, you fall back in love with it again. And uh, I, think, I think we're on a, a smarter path now where it's like, you know, we're not going to do that again. We're not throwing ourselves that hard. <laughs> It's kind of, no, kind of the youthful exuberance as well, right? As you get older, I've noticed with myself as well, as you get older, you have to slow and take time. You just can't keep up anymore. No, you can't. Yeah, I can't, I can't get hammered like three or four <laughs> nights on the truck because I will die. Well, yeah, and then most of you are, I have families, right? Yes, yeah. I've, I've got a young son. Um, yeah, well, many of us, Cam just had a kid. Um, Ben's about to have another. And yeah, it's just, Sam's about to have another all babies galore and the asking asking camp. In the lead up uh, to this new album then, am I right in saying that you try to kind of reconnect with that initial passion you had for music and, and kind of uh, I, I don't yeah. know if if it's a reset button or kind of at least reflect on what you've done before and kind of uh, see where you are? I think, you know. <clears throat> With this new album, it, we have been sort of, it's not like a back to basics because that doesn't really, it's not really the right mm. way to describe it, but it's its reconnecting with us as just not only musicians, but friends and like, you know, our passion for being in a band with a, with one another. And um, it was a bit of a journey for us because uh, it is, we, we you know, um, we had been, we've been doing this for a long time and um you know, with every album, we've sort of gone meandered down a different avenue or given fans like a different flavor of like, what's this? How's this? You know, like, um, so this one, it's instead of it being, we're going to go down this route or we're going to try and sound like this. It's like, we're going to go and like back, back to basics, but, <laughs> you know, just back to our core almost. And where are, where are, do our, um, where does our love lie in music, you know? And it is, it is, it's a bit more of a, um, a refined, I'd say, you know, older, even perhaps like more of a rock metal vibe, you know, like mm. sort of gone away with so much of the hyper polished modern sounds and it's a bit it's just raw and this is us, you know, five dudes fucking playing music, enjoying it, you know? Is that what you mentioned at the end there? Just five dudes uh, in a room playing music. Uh, is it is it kind of almost inevitable that 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 kind of slips away as as you uh, as it becomes kind of a business thing as well? And you as as you mentioned, you all grow older, you get families, you evolve as people. So is it? How do you remind yourself of that? That it's it's yeah. all about being in the room together. Well, that's the thing. It's because you do, you, you know, it's not just a, it's not just it becoming a business, but you as people, as a group, you spread. Like we're spread out all over the America, which is mm. fucking huge. You know, it's like <laughs> it's a massive country. So we've, you know, Danny's on one side, Cam and Sam are on the other, Ben's dotting all over the place. I'm sort of in the middle, but it's like, there's a lot of distance between us. Mm. So, you know, five guys just like, oh, we want to have a jam tonight. That's like fucking thousands of dollars worth of flights and hotels <laughs> and like a really big fucking commitment just to play our instruments. Whereas, you know, in the early days, we all lived with one another, you know, whether it be on the road, in an RV, fucking wherever we're at, we're pretty much together, you know? So um, in that regard, it was like finding, like going back to it, it was just like, yeah, we're just going to, pull it back this is going to be us music that's it it's like i think the pandemic and and just like having all that time away is really we've had our thoughts you know and it's like okay this is what 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 are we doing here why are we doing this and it's like we should do it for the reasons that we did it for the first album you know mm -hmm. for the very first time we got together as a group um 
you should go back to that. And I think that might be the the correct move and the correct way to come back to the music industry as it's slowly piecing itself back together from you know fucking massive loss, you know. Right. It's, what what better way to come back and show what you've become over the past decade or so? We felt this was the correct way, you know. And am I right in saying you all gathered in uh, Franklin, Tennessee, uh, for kind of uh, writing and, and, and recording session? Yeah, so we we had like a bunch of very rough demos, and um, Ben had Ben's a bit of a he's insane. He's always like trying to write stuff. Like he's already like I'm gonna go and write as well. Like, Dude, just fucking calm down. Like fucking hold on a sec. Um, but uh, so we came, we went there with you know quite a few ideas and hashed them out and really, you know, put me on the bones in Franklin, um, you know, and that's where we tracked it. We were there for about four, five weeks. I can't remember exactly. Mm -hmm. But um, and that was the first time that we'd all been at a studio together for any amount of time since fuck, maybe like 2011, 2012. Oh, wow. Because we'd be, you know, I'd fly in to track some or write some and I'd go and then Danny had come back and then, it would just be like, it, it, you know, I mean, we'd never do that. We'd never just be like, okay, we've allocated ourselves this amount of time. We're all getting it, getting here together and we're going to live it. We're going to fucking eat, sleep, breathe it. This is us, you know? So doing that is just, it was a, it was a fucking great experience, man. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And I think it did wonders, you know, not only for the music, but our friendship, how we've matured is, 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 people and fucking it was a great time and i think we will we'll continue doing that from now on right I did, and i can imagine well especially because it's been such a long time as you say that that you were able to do that did you rediscover or certain elements of your friendship or even things about each other uh that either you didn't know or or kind of forgotten over time i think i think it's just funny man like you know like doing this li living living it with one another um, mm. for the first time in so long. It's not like discovering new parts, but it is, yeah, it is like, you know, you remember things or you mm. can like, we, a lot of times we would just be like late at night reminiscing about random stuff that happened um, so many years ago and how we've changed as people. And, you know, it was, it was, it was a, I'd say it was as much of a learning experience, but it's not really learning about one another because we do know each other very, very well, but, just yeah like a bit of a refresher and it's like almost reminding ourselves why we've been doing it with each other for so long you know what i mean like it's just, sure oh yeah this, sure. Is a, this, this feels right you know get it yeah and then and looking back at all the, and this reminds me of one of the one of the songs on the album you've made it this far so uh, mm -hmm. that that notion of of you made and i wrote down the line i'm so uh where, where is it it's crazy how far you've come, all you've done, uh, the life that you came from, take a step back and look at who you are. So, so it's mm -hmm. a, for you personally, then, what's the, what's the last year a time of reflection then as well? Yeah, I mean, it, it, the last year was it, for myself, my band, and many musicians around the world, it was a massive time of reflection. And, and you know, uh, you were sort of in the unknown. And when you're in that void or that space, what do you have to do apart from reflect you know so you do um and you know I, I we're all incredibly proud of what we've accomplished over the past you know fucking 10 plus years but it, it does you know we, we've accomplished a lot and it's, you know we've, we're not done yet you know we've got a lot more to accomplish and um i think uh i think it's you know I mean, obviously, you, you've heard it record. I think I'm very excited for the, the rest of the world to hear it. And uh, I think it's going gonna, gonna to do it for a few people, I think, man. <laughs> it, it, yeah, I, I did listen to it. it um, well, I, I don't like to uh, talk about my opinion of it, but uh, let's jump into the album a little bit. Because was there, you mentioned you had a couple of uh, tentative ideas and demos uh, as you went to, to Tennessee. So... Was there a moment early on in the process where you kind of had a song or you started to flesh out the song where you thought, okay, this is it. This is what we were looking for for this album. Um, I think 
those that, that's funny there's like you as you're writing and our songs start to come to fruition you um it, that that will change as time goes on you know what i mean like oh this mm -hmm. is the definitive sound for the record and, oh no this should be the sound for the record and then it it's not so much like finding a sound and then like we need to hit fucking copy and paste and just fucking put a whole album of that and just ne you know we've never been like that it's more like okay there's all these definitive concepts how do we tie them all together and if they sound cohesive that's what makes an album an album you know so it it, it that happened a few times over the course of the few months or you know the time we spent creating this record but um i think once we really dialed it into it was more like the sound like what's the tone what's going to be the, the tones of the guitar what's mm. going to be the sound of how's danny going to sing what's my what are my drums going to sound like what's you know what is the overall sound of the album and once we once we um discovered that you know it just came together really well is there one song uh you can take me through where you kind of had this 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 um yeah, progression of, of where you started and then kind of trying to together to figure out what it should be yeah i mean one of the songs uh it's the last song the album actually the gray um mm -hmm. that you know that song was it was one of those songs that uh twisted and turned and evolved and shaped into so many different ways and uh you know it took it was you know it took quite a few nights actually like long nights of trying different things and you know some people leaving, some people coming back and just like, you know, just really like working at it until it mm. found its final form. Um, and, you know, I, I'm stoked with the final form it found. Like it, it just me, it's been through many. It was a weird, <laughs> she didn't look the same after the day. You know? <laughs> it's like, she's got a different face on now. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's just, it, it, it's just funny when those, those situations do occur and it's, it, is, it is the case you know it's like not all songs can just be like oh we wrote it in 30 minutes you know we spent a day tracking it boom there you go you know mm. um, some of them are a bit harder to um, you know discover where they really need to be but at the end of the day uh, I think you know we found where each of the songs need to be you know and is that a gut feeling then that you kind of know when when something is is going in the right direction yeah i think it's it's more and you know if someone or some you know if people aren't don't have that then it's like okay well we need to rethink it because if you know out of the five six seven of us that are like you know here right now um it, it if people aren't feeling that then what's to say that other people won't feel the same way you know mm. it's like it's got it's got to feel good and particularly feel good for us five and then you know matt obviously our producer he's you know he's um you know a good friend of ours and you know he's worked on you know three albums with us now so his he's got a big opinion and you know we we, we take opinions of others you know like we've got mm. long time crew members and managers and stuff people have been with us for a very very long time seen you know learn how we are as people and how we are as a band and uh, you know we try to try and listen to people's opinions you know um, mm. so oh, that's good so being open to uh, yeah I, I always wonder about that because um, obviously if you if you are too open about things you can be swayed maybe in a direction but I do think there there needs to be some healthy uh, feedback and, and back and forth I think to get to the next next level yeah, um, i read somewhere and I, i'm not sure if this is true but uh that ben said that um he was really happy with the, with the certain lick that he did on uh the title tracks he was on the inside is there anything on the album that you that that you're particularly proud of or that you thought or that was kind of a labor of love that that kind of ended up the way you wanted right well it's kind of funny that actually so one of my favorite tracks on the record is uh, faded out the second track which was, that was one of those ones that just sort of fell out. Mm. Um, you know, it wasn't, it just sort of happened. It was like, boom. <laughs> like Danny had this idea and I think we went out for dinner um, and we left him to go and track. Cause he was, he got into like, he, he was like liking to track at night. 
he was like, he did some in the day, some in the day. And he was like, and I'm, you know, I'm easy. So I was just like, you know, whenever you need to do, you do. Like, cause we, went, we didn't do drums and then guitar and then bass. We was just, we did it all over the place because we were living there. You know, I, my kit was set up the whole time. All the guitar rigs were set up the whole time. So, you know, we just take it in turns and whoever felt like doing when. And, you know, obviously, um, like I was saying, I'm, I'm easy. So I was just like, you know, dude, you want to track tonight? We'll, we'll, we'll peace out, give you some space. And, uh, and, and then, you know, a, a rough version of that song occurred uh, whilst we're in the studio. And uh, I, I listened to it. When it was my turn to track it, it was just very basic, very rough drum, you know, and like a, a, it had a complete structure, but it, none of the frills and bells and whistles were on it. So the first time I actually ever played it on a kit, we hit record and I'd say about 75% of my first ever time is on, is on the album. Okay. Yeah, like the, the, uh, the interlude where um, me and Danny go back and forth, like he does, he sings and raps really fast and I play real fast. I gave that a few turns and a few, a few runs over, but the main part, it was my first ever take, which is kind of rare, especially in the drum world or my world nowadays, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people don't even like record real drums. They just like, put it in a fucking computer so that felt pretty good i was like okay cool i haven't got too bad in my time my year or so at home. <laughs> well, that, that's an interesting point then that you raised because as musicians obviously you try i suppose to to continually develop what, what you do so so how have you seen and and then obviously as you mentioned the pandemic uh being a lull time is it, it it challenges your 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 um discipline to practice i suppose um but, but what, how do, that too. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. But how have you seen your development then as from a musician standpoint, uh, from, from where you kind of you guys started out? Um, I think my the way that I approach my drums is far more mature. Uh, you know, especially in the early days, it was just like faster, more notes. How how can I put more into this section where it was like realistically? That's just the wrong way of thinking. And that's, you know, as I grow older, that's something if any like younger musicians ask me, that's always the piece of advice I give is like, you don't need to play 100% all the time. Because if everyone does that all the time, just a whole lot of fucking mush, you know, particularly on drums. You know, I can't stand it when drummers just overplay for the sake of it. So it's more like, how, how are you playing it? You know, am I playing this? as tight as I can am I in the pocket as good as I am like how how hard is my rim shot right now you know like can I is my kick cutting through it's not like how many notes am I playing it's how am I playing them you know and that's something that I think I've definitely improved on a shitload over the years is just how do I make something quite simple sound very good because that's like you look back at all like the great rock and metal drummers and that's what they do you know it's Mm -hmm. It's like making a fucking just four to the floor sound badass. Like ACDC are fucking cool as fuck. <laughs> Guess what? They have the same drum beat in every single song, but it sounds dope. You know, it's like, how do we get that? You know? I love ACDC as an example of a band who kind of never changed anything, but it's still cool. It's, it's, it's just still amazing. Rad. Yeah, just yeah, con- you, have, you have kind of David Bowie on one side who just switches everything up every time and then you have acds who just does, does the same thing for for i don't, I don't know four decades by now yeah. and, and it's just still as cool as when they started it's it's yeah. amazing i do i love them both though I'll admit, yeah you know, exactly so yeah. that, that, sh- that shows you kind of the spectrum of, of, of types of musicians that there can be finally yeah. then um as for kind of now the album coming out and then uh well you already mentioned that you've uh, recently played so what are you most looking forward to for this? Because I, 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 I think you're going on tour this fall uh, in America. So what, what are you mm-hmm. most looking forward to um, in terms of getting back to a sense of normalcy for you, uh, for, for a touring band? I, I think, for, for, well, for me, and uh, it's, it's just these songs that you, we've been creating and, and, and tracking and, like it, you know, making whatever, it's just, they only live one life online or in your CD player on your record. That's one life. It's like they live a completely different life on the stage or in a live setting. 
And we've always been a band that writes songs for a live setting. Like, that's another thing that we've just, you know, under the way that we've matured. It's like, how is this going to sound live? How is this going to sound in front of 10,000 people? Like, how is this going to sound in the arena? Because, like, we always were aiming, we want to be that band. You know, we want to be a, a arena band. We want to play this huge festival. How, how are we going to, how, how is it going to go off in that environment? So my biggest thing, you know, getting back out on tour is showing people that these songs live this life, you know? Mm. It's like, yeah, you listen to it on your record player. That's fucking cool. Come hear it through a fucking PA and it's going to knock your tits off. Like, you know, hell yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my favorite bit about it. Right. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned that because, um, yeah, there's definitely some very catchy hooks and and, and elements on the, on the album that I suppose in the studio you know, oh, this will work well live or this will be interesting live. So, mm-hmm. um, final thing then is, is what is the ambition for the band? Is it still uh, stadiums and then as as big as you can be? Because there is a song called Fame on the album, which which is also interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we you know that's the, the funny. If you like actually look into the lyrics, it's. Mm. it's more of a reflection of what it can do to you more than like what we have and uh, you gotta read into that one that's a, a <laughs> Danny's trying to be fucking trying to be coy with everyone um yeah dude I mean we we've you know we've looked up to the greats and rock bands and you know we've been saying it since fucking reckless and relentless we, we want to you know take this genre of music and make it really fucking popular again um so that's what we're going to continue doing, you know. <laughs> Same <path>. Excellent. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. That sounds good. Uh, James, may I thank you for your time? No. Hell yeah, man. Appreciate it. Thank you.